Little update on the Saints OC hiring process. Here's your update. We're losing candidates left and right. Candidates are either getting hired by other teams or candidates are deciding to stay where they're put. Gerard Johnson, staying in Houston. Bobby Slowey, staying in Houston. Ben Johnson, staying in Detroit. Interesting times. You know, I, I can't remember a time where we've had candidates like this all decide to stay, all decide to just hold up. Now, what that means is that some of those jobs like Washington, who we assumed was a Ben Johnson destination, now Washington has to scramble and figure out who's our new head coach. Is it Eric Bieniemy? I don't know. So it's an interesting world to be in right now because we already were losing candidates like Dan Pitcher and Zach Robinson and uh, Shane Waldron. We were already losing candidates like that to just different jobs. But now we're losing candidates and the domino effect that we thought would happen isn't happening anymore. So interesting times in the Saints OC hiring search because there's only so many names out there right now where the, the pool is just naturally shrinking this pool that was huge this pool that had 50 different candidates and all of a sudden now is shrunk down to you know to like 10 names closer uh, to uh, hiring an offensive coordinator and there's a little bit of news as i'll kind of go through it today um There's, there's several candidates as they've apparently started to pare down the list of... Yeah, word on the street is that the Saints have honed in on a few different names. But again, I wonder how much of that is they just kind of have to because the names are dwindling. Like the Saints may say, yeah, our, our list is now uh, honed down to five candidates. But are there just five left? You know, do... Do we believe that they have targeted a name or targeted a person, or it's just kind of happenstance that all these other names are being removed and it's kind of a, a mini game of survival? A finalist here as they get closer to naming somebody. Um, and earlier in the day or late last night, I guess, Nick Underhill tweeted that um, the Saints search for an offensive coordinator has narrowed considerably. Uh, they have honed in on their candidates and are adhering to league rules as they go through the process. So, so the last bit there, the adhering to league rules, that part's interesting because I wonder if that means, or you would think that means that they may be interested in coaches that are still coaching. So coaches on Kansas City, coaches on San Francisco. I know Clint Kubiak and Brian Greasy were, were mentioned earlier in the, in the hiring kind of search. So maybe that's what that means. And that, I mean, okay. Like, at least that gives us an explanation of why we're kind of dragging this on. But, man, you better hope that you got your guy. Because if if you're pretty much saying we're not interested in any of the other guys, we're going to hold out, we're going we're gonna to go the long game to, to talk to Clint Kubiak, you better hope Clint, Clint Kubiak is the guy. Um, it's a very difficult Nick name to tweets say. that the Saints are getting close. They're narrowing down their list. They're honing in on their candidates. Well, then we find out today uh, that the Saints have a new candidate on the list that they're looking to interview. Um, it was Tom Pelissero who had it first earlier today that um, the New Orleans Saints were set to interview a uh, a Ravens assistant, Greg. L yeah, Greg Lewis. Who? I feel like I should be the. Uh, Tootsie Pop mascot, because all I can think is who? Who? Let, let, first of all, let me walk you through that, okay? Tootsie Pop mascot famously was an owl. Everyone knows that. Owls, the phonetic noise that people think owls make is. Everyone with me? <laughs> so putting the pieces together there of why uh, I would be asking who if I was the Tootsie Pop mascot, because it's an owl, okay? Stay with me, all right? So Greg Lewis is a name that popped up. Greg Lewis has coached running backs and wide receivers in his career. He played wide receiver in the NFL for Andy Reid, and now he was a coach in Kansas City and now uh, I think is in Baltimore, but he's been a position coach, wide receivers, and running backs. So a little confused of how – and you got to remember too, guys, for better or for worse – this is the first offensive coordinator we'll have. First new offensive coordinator. First outside guy that we'll have calling the offense in, what, 16 years, 17 years? Because we had Peyton, we had Carmichael, whatever. So 
this is this is a huge deal. This is a big hire. And something that I've said that this guy has to come in with the ability to kind of potentially be the next head coach. Is it Greg Lewis? Is Greg Lewis the guy that's going to come out of this? Greg Lewis, the wide receiver coach, the former the running back wide receiver coach? Is is that the guy who we've honed in on? Is that through all of this? That's who's come out on top? I don't know much about Greg Lewis. I, I, I don't. But another thing that kind of, I don't want to say rubs me the wrong way, but when I'm hearing we may go into the season with Dennis Allen and Greg Lewis, when we could go into the season with Mike Vrabel and anybody, or Bill Belichick and anybody, I'm kind of wondering why we don't just do that. You know, hey, why don't why are why are we doing this thing over here with Dennis Allen and Greg Lewis? Maybe we should just do the thing with Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel. I had someone ask me a question today. They were saying, you, "What do you think about John Gruden being the the head coach?" I like Gruden, or as I like the idea of John Gruden. You know, with with the Derek Carr stuff, we've t- we've made videos on that. But at some point, you got to take a step back and say, "Well, wait a minute, Bill Belichick is still out there." Well, wait a minute. Mike Vrabel is still available. Like these these coaches are still a thing. So if we want to fix a culture, if we want to fix a team, you know, I know I know we're shooting. You know, it's a long shot, but it's weird for me to hear Greg Lewis and these random position coach names when there's much bigger fish out there. And I'm not saying Bill Belichick or Mike Vrabel for a coordinator position. I'm saying I wonder why we haven't taken a look at just you know happenstance or serendipity or whatever's happened, maybe we should look at making a bigger move since this OC thing has kind of gone awry. Lewis, their wide receiver coach for the offensive coordinator job. He notes Lewis is a former NFL receiver who won two Super Bowls on Andy Reid's staff in Kansas City before joining Baltimore this past season. So connecting all the dots here, we keep waiting for the Saints to make an announcement. Um, Apparently they're paring down the list. Then we hear a new name And then Albert Breer, just a bit ago, uh, tweeted that ex-Bears offensive coordinator Luke Getze is in New England. Now this right here almost made me vomit all over my chest. This is, when I saw this, I mean, you talk about just perfect timing. Because right now at the Sanger, Les Miserables is playing. And that translates to the miserable one. That's what Luke Getze is. The miserable ones. That is what this tier of offensive coordinator candidates are. Luke Getze, Greg Lewis, Mike Sullivan, those are the miserable ones. We have officially entered that tier. What are we doing? Luke Getze was the OC with Chicago, I think, for what, two years? Again, for Chicago. Chicago has never had a 4,000-yard passing quarterback in their entire existence. Chicago's offense has been terrible. It has been ass. He got canned. We're going to bring him in? Luke Getze having a second interview? What is he interviewing for? Maintenance? I mean, well, like what, what position do we have this guy interviewing for for a second time? Valet? Concierge? Security in the lobby? You're telling me? And he's having a second interview for offensive coordinator? England today interviewing with the Patriots. And we'll have a second interview for the Saints OC job tomorrow, Wednesday, in New Orleans. So, Getsy isn't a name we've talked about, but that's a guy who apparently is about to get his second interview with the Saints. And now the Saints have added Greg Lewis to their list, their ever-growing list, as supposedly, reportedly, they're paring their list down. So what do we make of all this? I I don't know. I wonder if the Saints are being thorough, which is fine, by the way. If you're Yeah, I agree. We the Saints don't have to rush. Okay. The Saints don't have to rush into this. They they don't have to freak out and just hire somebody. But there is a there is a little bit of a there is a little bit of a, a, a situation there where you're saying, oh, we're being thorough. Okay, well, it's hard for me to believe you're being thorough when the list of candidates you're giving me is Greg Lewis, Mike Sullivan, Luke Getze. This doesn't seem thorough to me. You know, if, if it take if it takes you four and a half hours to decide where we're going to dinner, and you're like, all right, 
I'm I'm looking at the uh, I'm I'm looking at the Applebee's menu right now. It's like, oh, hold on a second. Like, you are being thorough because you have taken four hours to choose for dinner, but now you're looking at the possibility of fourteen dollar all you can eat riblets. Like, you know, like, wait wait a wait a minute now. Like, th- this isn't thorough. That you're trying to give me food poisoning. Okay, no hate on Applebee's. Okay, I, I've I've had plenty of Brutus Long Island iced teas back in my day. The ones that would you take two sips. And it would make this part of your jaw seize up because of just seize like this because of the horrific high levels of sugar in their whatever syrup they were using and their well liquor that they probably used to get paint off of the uh, the old refrigerators in the back. So trust me, okay? I've had plenty of Applebee's in my days. No hate to Applebee's. But that's what it seems like we're doing. It seems like we're using this term thorough of just looking at a uh, hot garbage, Okay. Once I start hearing the Mike Sullivan and the Luke, the, uh, Luke Getze are getting multi-interviews, that's when I'm starting to think, eh, this doesn't sound thorough to me. This sounds like we're kind of just, just picking some bad candidates. You are being thorough. I'm perfectly good with that. There's no need to rush a hire. You're not playing a game tomorrow. I mean, you have a contingent at, you know, at the Senior Bowl doing scouting. You've got Combine coming up and draft and all that stuff. And yeah, you'd love to have your OC in place to get input there, but it's not critical today to have your OC hire. So yeah, it isn't. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's not like we're losing, you know, it's not like we're losing anyone in our scouting department. You know what I mean? Like we're, we've got people there. We've got people. We 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 know what we can do. You know, the scouting department's intact. The you know all that's good. So the evaluation process isn't that big of a deal. So so yeah, I mean, we can take our time and, and maybe we can see. You know, we we can see if uh, what other offensive coordinators have been fired by some of the worst offenses in the NFL. We can see if any of their uh, coordinators want to want to come take a look. If you're being thorough, so you don't settle. Okay, I'm good with that. But I can't decide if they're being thorough or if they're being indecisive. Like, follow me along here. Um, there are three known candidates that are no longer on the board. Three. Dan Pitcher, the Cincinnati Bengals quarterbacks coach, has been elevated to offensive coordinator. Shane Waldron, who was Gone. with the Seahawks, has taken the OC job in Chicago. And Zach Robinson, who Gone. was with the Rams, has taken the OC job in Atlanta. Gerard so it's Johnson. three known Gone. candidates who are no longer on the board. And then there's this whole other list of candidates that we know the Saints have interviewed or are going to interview. Whom? A Gerard Johnson, the Gone. quarterbacks coach in Houston, has interviewed twice. We've heard Clint Kubiak and Brian Greasy. Ronald okay. Curry is the in-house candidate. Doesn't count. Mike Sullivan with the Steelers. Mike Sullivan. Uh, Brian Johnson, who was just let go in Philly. Another fired, fired offensive coordinator. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about right now, we are quote-unquote being thorough, and we have whittled our list down to fired offensive coordinator Brian Johnson, fired offensive coordinator Luke Getze, fired offensive coordinator... Uh, I mean, I don't even know what category you would put Mike Sullivan and wide receiver running back coach Greg Lewis. We have honed our list down to the point where we're not even interviewing play callers. We're not even interviewing coordinators. We're interviewing people who who were either so bad at their job they got fired or we're interviewing people who do not do, not do this. They're position coaches. So, you know, I, maybe we should... Maybe we should go back a little bit and, and, and take a look at some like successful coordinators, some people who have successfully called plays. Really? And now Greg Lewis with Baltimore. Then there's this this one off of John Gruden that keeps getting mentioned, but doesn't seem like it's there's any real legitimacy to that. But I guess we'll follow it and see. Um maybe maybe the Saints are waiting on Kubiak and or Greasy. That's got to be. They're both gotta coaching be. with the 49ers. Gotta the 49ers be. are still gotta playing. Be. Maybe this week is when they can make some type of uh, overtures, formal overtures toward them interview. We'll see. I don't know. If that's the case, and those are the guys that you're really waiting to talk to, and you had to wait until you found a moment when you could, okay. True. Okay, I will give them that. I will give them this grace. If this whole thing leads to Brian Greasy or Clint Kubiak, and that's who they wanted the whole time, and they come in and they are good at this, they're successful, they're they're okay. I can I can listen to that. I can listen to the idea of like, well, you're getting a Super Bowl, you know, experienced coach. You're getting somebody who is on the Kyle Shanahan staff. You're getting part of that tree. 
okay, you're getting kind of young, innovative. You're getting some creative assets from their offense. You know what their offense can do. Very successful system. All right, cool. If we're going to wait, you know, all right, I would rather that be the answer than go get Mike Sullivan or Luke Getzey. I mean, I'm telling you guys, I'm starting to get, uh, I can feel the, just the phlegm buildup, just the, the GERD, the indigestion, the, the Pepto-Bismol acidic bubbles just co coming up, coming up in my throat. I can't even breathe whenever I, whenever I'm hearing Mike Sullivan and Luke Getzey. I'm going to have to sleep sitting up tonight because of the indigestion that is bubbling hot, like volcanic in my throat because of Luke Getzey, Jesus, and Mike Sullivan and Brian Johnson. I mean, we are down at the labor ready uh, line for those, those recently fired coordinators. We're, ju we're just finding the best of the bunch down there. Oh, you got a pink slip? Oh, you just got canned? Whoa, wait a minute. Did you say you're... You, did you say your offense had the 28th points per game in the NFL last season? Then you got fired? Ooh, baby. How about a second interview for you? What, what, what's that back there? Oh, my God. You you, you, you coach for a franchise that's never had a 4,000-yard quarterback? Great news. That's exactly what we're looking for. Like, how? how what, what's what's going on here? What am I missing? Good. That That's being thorough. That's being patient. That's That's waiting for your guy, and I'm okay with that. But if that's not the case, the longer you wait, you're not making the decision. The decision is made for you. The yeah, it's exactly what I said to start the video. Like, are the Saints are the Saints proactively saying we're honing in on targets or we're whittling down our list, or is their list just naturally getting whittled down? Or you know, like, is, are we just kind of sitting in the back seat saying like, whatever happens, happens. Whatever. You know, whatever coach is left at the end of the day, we'll choose from them. Like that, that is definitely a real possibility that that that's what's actually happening. I'm not going to say it is because I'm still holding out for the Kubiak or whatever ends up happening with that. You know, just to see to hear once once the Super Bowl is done and over with, and we can you know get some clarity on that. But yeah, this is a real possibility that that's what's happening. That we're just kind of natural selection is just happening, and we're just letting it play out. The longer you wait and coaches take other jobs, your list starts to narrow and starts to get pared down, yeah, not by your doing, ago. but by the fact that other teams yeah, have Matt, hired desirable candidates. Matt, I and, said that 15 minutes ago. You know, I, I we've talked about this enough, and I do wonder how much there is to it, but are the Saints handcuffed here because they're not a desirable job? Yes, they are. This is an NFL offensive coordinator job, and there are going to be candidates that want this Saints OC job. But candidates who have options are more likely to pick better options than. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's like when at the very beginning when people were talking about Joe Brady, it's like, guys, Joe Brady is not going to he's not going to turn down being the OC for the Bills to go be the OC for the Saints. You know, like I don't think the Saints are that bad of a destination. But the more that comes out with the infighting and the culture and all that, maybe it is. You know, if the, the the OC that comes here has to be okay with two things, they have to be okay with Derek Carr as the quarterback, which, you know, whatever. I got different strokes, different folks. But they got to be okay with Carr because Carr will be there for at least one year. And then they probably got to be okay with a bit of a rebuild. They got to be okay with some moving pieces, and this is not a very stable situation if you compare it to other teams. If you're an OC and you're walking in here, you're thinking, well, I, I have an aging roster, the oldest roster in the NFL. I've got salary cap concerns. I've got Derek Carr on an enormous contract who will be there for one, maybe two more years. Then I'm going to lose some of those stars, some of those core players, the Camaras, the Michael Thomases, the Chris Olaves, whatever. Michael Thomas probably already already out. Then I've got to rebuild it. Oh, and the head coach is a defense, an old school defensive guy who seemingly is on the way out or could be fired. You know, it's like it it isn't the worst situation because there are there is some firepower there. You can come in here. You know, the Saints are, I think, a destination as far as you know where, where you want to go like, as as a coach. But there's definitely some red flags. In a New Orleans team that very well could have a lame duck coach. And a, an aging quarterback that isn't great.
Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of unrest around the organization. Listen, Michael Thomas tweeting about how nobody wants to be the offensive coordinator while that that stings and you never want to air your dirty laundry in public. You do that in house. There's probably a hint or hints of truth to that. Like I mean, I think at the bare minimum, this coordinator has to be okay with Allen and Carr. You know, I mean, and it seems like that's the two biggest sticking points this whole season has been the team and certain player and whoever's disagreements with Allen, and then the team and certain players disagreement with Carr. So we're asking this coordinator to be full, all in to put his career on the line, basically, and attached to those two guys. I think Allen is more of the problem than Carr. I've said that all season long. And, and you know, maybe, but again, it's like, I just think there's an easy out. I really do. And that's the easiest out is for Loomis to say, you know what? We really screwed the pooch the last couple of years here. This has been a disaster. We're fully shifting into the new chapter of the Saints, the new era of the Saints. We're fully shifting into bringing a new culture, a new foundation, a new everything. We're hiring Mike Vrabel, and we're going to let Mike Vrabel be the new head coach of the Saints. And then we can figure out the rest. Let, let Vrabel hire the staff. Let Vrabel do, do all that. You've got a young, you know, because I didn't say Bill Belichick, because Belichick's 72 years old. you got Vrabel, a guy who has recent success, a guy who, you know, has, has created the culture, created an identity, did what he did in Tennessee. We know he can do it. Put him in. You know, let's start this new, let's let's start. Let's just hold new thing. It seems like the Saints have actually handicapped themselves in this situation by saying, let's hold on to Allen and let's try and find the coordinator to plug in there. When there is, and there's not that many coordinators, there's more head coaching candidates right now than coordinators, I would say. Having even just Dan Quinn, Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, even just those three, Pete Carroll, you could even throw him in there. Just those guys being available, and then you look at the coordinators that are available, it's like, eh, you know what? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna start fresh, I might I might as well just go all in. You know, I really I think that is the easiest out. I don't think they're gonna do it. I don't think Mickey's gonna do to do that. But it's just crazy that we could. We could do that. Not to say nobody wants it, but yeah, I'd imagine you would have a harder time finding an offensive coordinator in New Orleans than you would in Chicago, where they're going to have the number one overall pick, or yeah. with the Rams, where they do have yes. great offenses, or like Zach Robinson going with Raheem Morris to Atlanta, where they're getting a fresh start. You know, it, you very well, any OC could be taking this job, understanding that it's it could be a one-year deal, and you're packing up and moving again somewhere else if Dennis Allen gets fired. And so much is going to be dictated to you because the quarterback's already in place. So there's a lot of variables with this job. And I don't know where you know, the wheel ultimately is going to stop spinning and land. Um, if it is Greg Lewis, you know, quick thumbnail on him. He, Greg Lewis's path is actually a lot like Cortez Hankton's. Um, played professional football for about a decade. They're both about the same age. Hankton's 42. Uh, Greg Lewis is 43. Uh, Lewis, you might remember, played for the Eagles, Patriots, and Vikings when he played for the Eagles, he was in that Super Bowl against the Patriots, the one with Donovan McNabb and T, the one where T.O. came off the broken leg. Look, unless he's going to play slot receiver for us, unless he's going to be on the field on third downs, unless we need him to move the chains, why are we talking about him playing? Like, why are we talking about him playing in the Super Bowl? This kind of illuminates what I'm talking about, that – if his if 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 his resume is just oh he had eighteen catches and and his last year with the Eagles like what what has he done as a coach you know like he's not going to be he's not going to be a possession receiver who we're looking for on on third and three to you know to to move the sticks here so uh, I mean it'd be cra like it'd be crazy if we were interviewing Gerard Johnson. And we're like, yeah, you know, Gerard, Gerard Johnson. You know, I mean, Gerard Johnson's resume includes uh, he threw for 314 yards in the Peach Bowl with Texas A&M. It's like, why? What? Wait, what? Why are we talking about? Why are we talking about that? To play in the Super Bowl, he actually had a touchdown reception in that game, by the way. Sweet. But um, in, in any event, um, got into coaching about a decade ago. It was at University of San Diego, then San Jose State, then Pitt. 
And then his first NFL job actually was in New Orleans yeah. as a an offensive assistant on Sean Payton's staff back in 2015. And then he went to the Eagles, then spent six years with the Chiefs, won a couple of Super Bowls, and this year was his first year in uh, in Baltimore with the Ravens. So former NFL receiver who's been coaching in the NFL since 2015, has familiarity with New Orleans and with Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen has familiarity with him. So there's a lot of things there that, that make sense about it. Familiarity with New Orleans. He was here for a year, nine years ago. But are you hiring a first-time play caller? Which a lot of the guys on this list would be first-time play callers. Gerard Johnson, Clint Kubiak, Brian Greasy, Ronald Kerr. So I, I think the first-time play caller thing is probably going to have to be the route we go if we go with, with a new coach, not a retread like Gruden. Because that's what you're going to have to get with someone like Kubiak or Greasy or whoever. Someone who's not calling plays and wants to call plays. Same with Zach Robinson, where he's under McVay. McVay is going to call the plays. You know, the Shanahan boys are under Mike Shanahan or Kyle Shanahan. So if they want to call plays, they may take a risk and go somewhere just to call plays. You know, it, it's, it's going to be difficult to, to extract someone who's a good coordinator to be the coordinator here. That's why the coordinators on the list are all fired, or recently fired. The Sullivans and, and uh, everyone, Brian Johnson and Luke Getze. Curry, uh, Greg Lewis. So the other three we mentioned, Dan Pitcher, Zach Robinson. You know, those guys would be first-time play callers at this level. So, um, Yeah, same thing with Pitcher. Again, Nick Underhill. Sa sa same thing with Pitcher. Pitcher is under Taylor. Taylor's a play caller. If Pitcher wants to call plays, he's got to go somewhere else. He's got to take a bit of a risk. Supporting the Saints have narrowed down their search. And they're nearing in on a decision. And that's great. But it also feels a bit counterintuitive when they're introducing or we're learning about new candidates now as they're paring down their list. But maybe Yeah, agreed. That part too. Like to, to be like, oh, we've 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 got our list figured out. We know who we want. We've got this thing, all we got the targets. Oh, and hey, by the way, we're interested in Greg Lewis. Wait, what? I thought you had we wait, 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 wait. You just said you were interested in, you know, you had your target. Why are we interviewing Luke Getzey? Why did you just say that? So I agree there. So, I mean, just a little bit of an update for you guys. Yeah, it's not all negative, okay? I don't want people to say, you know, I don't want doom and gloom in the comment section. I don't, uh, you know, that's the wrong impression. The, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt with the Greasy and the Kubiak and, and whatever, whatever, but... If it's if we're sitting here and we're looking at Mike Sullivan and Luke Getze and Greg Lewis and Ronald Curry, like I'm concerned. I'm, I'm absolutely concerned for sure. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. I hope it works out. I don't. I mean, again, I, it it might be a Madden kind of mindset, but it's like, why don't we just go get Vrabel? Why don't we just go fix all of this? Why don't we just fix the culture, fix the franchise, stabilize everything? Why don't we just Start new, start afresh. Go get, go get, you know, go get Mike Brable. What are we doing? He's a dude. Like, go get him. But a different video for a different day. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.